let's look at how we would actually present in our calculation. First, you show your financial statement reader face value of the note, ten thousand dollars, and then you say, well, my present value of the principal part is. Six thousand three hundred fifty-five dollars. We already show you how to calculate that, and then you say my present value of all the interest of the four one thousand dollars interest convert back to today worth three thousand thirty-seven dollars. Therefore, you say my total present value of the note is nine thousand three hundred ninety-two dollars. My discount, which is the difference of the ten thousand dollars and the nine thousand three hundred ninety-two dollars. Is six hundred eight dollars. That amount gradually being converted back to your interest revenue. Now let's look at how we record them in our journal entries. January one, two thousand twelve. You said I receive notes receivable for ten thousand dollars. Someone gave you that note. You acknowledge the note. You increase on left hand side. You debit note receivable ten thousand dollars. On the right hand side. You acknowledge the cash you sacrificed, so you credit the cash for nine thousand three hundred ninety-two dollars. Then you are short of six hundred eight dollars. Remember, we are doing double entry accounting equation. Your left is always supposed to equal right. Therefore, you put the right basically is that plug-in number six hundred eight dollars. You call that discount on notes receivable. Now, first year end comes along, December thirty-one, two thousand twelve. You collect that first thousand dollars as interest receipt. Keep in mind, you did not collect. You do not collect one thousand one hundred twenty-seven dollars, but you are entitled of one thousand one hundred twenty-seven dollars because that one hundred twenty-seven dollars is the difference between the ten percent and the twelve percent. Therefore, you acknowledging true interest revenue of one thousand one hundred twenty-seven dollars. And since you have recorded that six hundred eight dollars on the right hand side, at January first, twelve months later, you take one hundred twenty seven dollars out of that six hundred eight dollars, and you put that on the left hand side to offset the original right hand side amount. Therefore, you have debited one hundred twenty seven dollars. So your left equal right again. Now let's take a look at short term and long term notes receivable. For this page, all you need to know is your stated rate could be less than your market rate, or could be more than your market rate, or could equal your market rate. So when the stated rate equals your market rate, you are issuing a note at face value. When your stated rate is higher or greater than market rate, then you premium your note receivable. When your stated rate is less than your market rate, like the example I just gave you, you discount your cash. The amount you give out. There are two types of note: short-term note or long-term note. Short-term notes normally is so-called less than one-year note. Equal or less than one-year note, you call that short-term note. If it's longer than one year, it's a long-term note. Short-term note is recorded at face value. Long-term note is recorded at present value, like the one we just showed you earlier. How do we do a note receivables net realizable value? On the screen, you see my notes receivables started out at eight hundred thousand dollars. That is on September thirtieth, two thousand twelve. Also, at that time, your allowances for notes losses is a hundred thousand dollars. Note could have a loss, so you estimate the loss the same manner you estimate allowances for notes losses in the same manner as you would estimate accounts receivable. So in this case, we assume it's a hundred thousand dollars of the eight hundred thousand dollars. So what do you expect to realize? That would be seven hundred thousand dollars. That's what you call the carrying amount of the note. Now, next page, I want to show you if you do elect to use fair value option. Keep in mind, this is an election. You don't have to use fair value option. How do you use it? The case I just showed you, your carrying amount was seven hundred thousand dollars. Now, three months later, at December thirty-one, two thousand twelve, you found out that your note is only worth five hundred thousand dollars. 
no longer seven hundred thousand dollars. So you said, well, I'd like to show my financial statement readers the true value. That true value would be five hundred thousand dollars. Therefore, you decide to use fair value option. So how do you do that? Let's take a look. You would record a unrealized holding gain or loss on the left hand side, debit side for two hundred thousand dollars. Keep in mind, losses and expenses are recorded on the left hand side, just like asset would. Then you would record a notes receivable, two hundred thousand dollars. That means you are decreasing your notes receivable collection right for two hundred thousand dollars. You will not be. You don't think you will be able to collect that two hundred thousand dollars. You may be able to, but we don't know at this point. Doesn't look good, so you acknowledge that. Some people would want to record this notes receivable account as fair value adjustment account. This fair value adjustment account is a contra asset account. If you use this account, you would list it right below your notes receivable account in your balance sheet. Therefore, you will show the original notes receivable amount and then your fair value adjustment amount. So that's a, in my opinion, a better presentation. Now, look at what I say here. If you are having a trading security. Instead of available for sale security or hold to mature security, trading security is a short term security. It means you can sell them or buy them anytime, mostly within the 90 days period. Anyway, if your security is a trading security, this unrealized holding gain or loss would go straight to your income statement. That's why I showed you in the account hyphen income. And realize holding gain or loss hyphen income two hundred thousand dollars. That means this amount will go in your income statement and decrease your income for the year, the period. But if your security is not a trading security, instead it is available for sale security. That means you hold it a little bit longer than the trading period, ninety days. You may you know hold it for six. Six months or whenever the market looks good and you decide to sell them or you need the cash, you decide to sell them. And then that is the available for sale security. In that case, this unrealized holding gain or loss account would go straight to your balance sheet. It will not go to your income statement. Therefore, it would be listed under your separate component in your equity section. As other comprehensive income. Now, finally, I want to show you summarize up the fair value option compared to the long term notes receivable recording method. First, you see there is a short term report I showed you earlier, reported a net realizable value, the same as you accounting for accounts receivable. That's no big deal. Next one, I want to show you the long term. Notes receivable. FASB requires companies to disclose not only your cost but also your fair value in the notes of your financial statements. So if your note says eight hundred thousand dollars, that's your cost, and then you have to disclose in your footnotes how much present market value is. If you do elect to use a fair value option. Keep in mind, this is an option. That's why I put it in red on my screen. You are not required to use this option. If you do elect to use the option, and then you will have to use this option in the year you recognize your notes receivable first. In other words, the year you receive that notes receivable. So you use the option to measure your financial instrument, including notes receivables. That's all I have for how to handle your notes receivable with interest on the notes. In other words, that note is not issued at face value. That note can be issued, may be issued at either premium or discount.
depends on if the market rate is higher than your interest rate or the market rate is lower than your stated interest rate. Thank you. See you next time for a different subject.